In this series of videos, we will take a look at how to work with multiple processes inside our C programs, how to communicate between them, how to create multiple threads, not just processes, what's the difference between threads and processes, and uh, what are the usual situations that you get into when using multiple threads. To start off, we'll take a look at uh, a function that you probably have heard the name of, and that is the fork function. Now, first, to use the function, what we have to do is first include unistd. So here I'm going to include unistd.h. And please note here that unistd is uh, a Linux specific library. So you're probably going to only find it on uh, Linux or there are some ports out there for Windows, but this is going to be, uh, for the most part, Linux. Okay. Uh, Later on, we'll take a look at the Windows functions that uh, are used in these types of situations, but that's uh, that's a bit more complicated. So we won't get into that right now. We're just going to look at this. So now let's just first uh, print out something on the on the screen. So I say print f. I'm going to say just hello world. Right? Right? Why not? Like everybody else does as uh, their first project. Now, if I try to launch this, I'm just going to get hello world on the screen. Right? That's that's perfectly fine. Now, what's going to happen if I do this after I call fork? So if I call fork here and print on the screen, hello world, what's going to happen? If I try to launch this, you'll notice something very interesting is going to happen. Hello world is going to be printed twice on the screen. But why twice? Like what, what's going on there? Well, it's actually uh, because of how fork works. What fork does is uh, you can think about it as forking the execution line, right? So here's my execution line. Here's like basically one here's like every single line that we're executing and we just go through every single line. And when you get a fork, what happens is a, a child process gets born sort of and starts executing uh, the following lines as well. So uh, you get here, here we get to fork. And at that point, there's a child process that goes on to actually execute alongside the main process right? at the same time. So this, in effect, creates another process. We, if we launch this program, we're going to get two processes, the one that's the main one that we execute, and then the other one that gets created once fork is called. Now, this fork actually returns a number, an integer actually, and this int is kind of important. So I can say int id and assign it to the return value of fork. And what I can do is actually print the value here. So I can say hello world from id and percent %d. I'm going to just add it here as an id. If I launch this, you'll notice something interesting. As you can see, I got two numbers. So I got hello world from ID zero and hello world from ID four, two, 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 two. Uh, what, what's that all about? Well, this is interesting because you can picture it like this. Uh, this line, so everything before the line of the fork line is going to be executed once, but uh, from this line onwards, everything is going to be executed twice, right? Once per process. So we're really going to have two IDs, two separate IDs being returned from fork. One is going to be in the main process and the other one is going to be in the child process. Now the ID in the child process is always going to be zero. Right? So this fork function, if you take a look at uh, the uh, tooltip here, it says that clone the calling process creating an exact copy. Return minus one for errors, zero to the new process, to the child process and the process ID so the process ID of the children to the old process, to the main process that we have created using, well, just executing the file itself, the executable itself, right? So in this case, if our ID is zero, that means we're in the child process. And if your ID is not zero, that means that you're in the main process. So this is how you can distinguish between the two processes. Now, Every single process in Linux, in Windows, everywhere has a process ID. Okay, so when you create a process, it's always going to have a process ID, which here you actually get from this fork call. So what I can do is say, if our ID is zero, then we know we're in the child process. So we can say printf hello from child process. Okay, and then else, if it's not zero, that means that we got an actual ID. 
And because we got an actual ID, that means that that, I, that ID is actually the child's process ID. So we can just say printf hello from the main process and just backslash n like that. And we can comment this out. And if I try to run this, you're going to notice that I get two different hellos. I got a hello from child process and hello from the main process because one of them was zero and the other one was something other than zero. You can usually predict what the number is going to be, but uh, it's going to be there. Now let's comment this all out for a second here and let's try an exercise. So what will happen if let's even remove this ID. We don't even need it. What would happen if I again print F hello world and no ID again. And I would actually start calling fork a second time. What would happen and how many times would uh, hello world be printed on the screen? Take a moment and think Think for a second, how many times this will be uh, printed on screen? If you've guessed four, then you are actually right. And congratulations for that, uh, because the correct answer is four times. Now, the question is why? Well, you probably have realized that uh, fork, the first fork, right, creates one child process. So here's the execution line and just create one. Now, this, these, uh, these processes both continue executing from that line seven forward, right? So they continue executing from that uh, point where they get the return value of the fork call, right? So then they start executing the eighth line where is another fork. So when they do that, each of them, so the main process again, creates another child process, but also the child process that was previously created at line seven creates another child process. So we get actually four execution lines going forward and all four of them hit this line nine that prints hello world. So really, if you type in uh, n times this fork uh, function in your program, you're going to get two to the power of n uh, processes. So here, if I uh, call fork four times, so if we launch it, this we're actually gonna get sixteen hello worlds on the screen, just like so. Let me actually make this a bit taller so I can count them. So here's four, then that's eight, then that's twelve, and that's sixteen. So we get sixteen hello worlds on the screen. This is why, if you call it multiple times, it actually multiplies every single time. Now, how can you actually prevent this? So if you want to, for example, create just three processes, how would you go about it? Well, the idea is pretty simple. All you have to do is to call fork on just one of the processes. So uh, here's the main line, right? When we call fork for the first time, we're just going to split it into two. But then when we get to the next line, there should be probably an if um, checking if our ID is zero. If our ID is zero, then it shouldn't call another fork. It shouldn't fork itself again. If it's not zero, that means that we're on the main process. So we can split again, right? So uh, I think you understand what I'm saying. Basically, if you are on the main process, you should be able to split again. But if you're not on the main process, if you're a child process of the main process, then it shouldn't do that. So what we can do here is say, uh, again, assign the ID of our uh, result here and I'm going to remove those two forks. And if I want to check if I'm in the child process or not, what I have to do is say if ID is zero, if ID is zero, then we're in the child process. So if ID is not zero, that means that we're in the main process. And if we're in the main process, what we want to do is to fork again. Okay. And, uh, like this, we should actually get only three processes because the second, the child process that was created there did not actually uh, create another process. So think from the perspective of the child process, right? We get here, we get the ID. Well, it's going to be zero because fork says like that, uh, that it should be zero here. It says that uh, it returns zero to the new process, which is the child process. So this guy returns, this guy gets assigned to zero and we check here if zero is different than zero. 
which is of course false, right? So we don't call fork. But in the case of the main process, we actually get here something like 4,000 something. That's a pretty big number. That's the idea of our child process in the main uh, process here. So here, this 4,000 is, is of course different than zero. So we of course call fork again. So we're gonna get three processes in this case. So if I launch this, we should get three times hello world printed on the screen. Now this is all I wanted to talk about in the first video. Here we have the fork function. You actually get the ID from the fork function and what it does is basically split the execution line into two. Every single time it gets called, of course. Uh, and later on, we're gonna talk about uh, IDs, process IDs a bit more. Here is just the basic idea. And I hope, I hope you now understand what fork does. If you do have any questions, please do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.